Our trade unions, the true vanguard of the struggles of working people for better working and living conditions. Why do trade unions in Africa and elsewhere celebrate May Day? And how does that impact on the daily struggles of workers? Pan African Television and People's Dispatch went out to find answers to these questions and the impact of neoliberal policies on the working people of Africa. We spoke to trade union leaders and workers in several African countries and we present to you the voices of African trade unions. May Day is important because it's our International Workers Day. This is a day that Kenyan workers join millions of uh, workers out there uh, in the world to celebrate what happened many years ago in the US. And significantly, one of the things that we always remember about May Day was the fight for eight hour work. Before the whole world started working eight hours, seven hours, and so on. People could work for 12 hours, 14 hours. But it was the struggle for eight hours that led to the, the sad killing of a number of trade union leaders, which led to the declaration of May 1 as May Day, which has become International Day of Solidarity. So May Day is very important for us because of two reasons to remind capital and government that they have a responsibility. To also remind ourselves that nothing good will come to us until we fight and struggle to maintain the, the writings for the working people of the country. And so, when we celebrate a long commemorate May Day as workers, Namaste, workers in the mining industry, it brings to fall many of the things that we went through many years ago and we are going through uh, up until today. And so as workers, it affords us an opportunity, you know, to look back and ask ourselves whether we have made any significant progress at all. Are working conditions better relative to the industrial revolution days? Or they have worsened. And in fact I must say that the Ghanaian worker, the Ghanaian mine worker, has made some strides, there's been some considerable progress over the period. And so celebrating the May Day remains very significant to the working people of this country, for that matter, workers within the mining sector. Bonjour, chers camarades. Je suis euh, le camarade Pierre Vincent de la Côte d'Ivoire. Je suis du syndicat de la Confédération générale des travailleurs de Côte d'Ivoire, Citarail. On a abrégé CDTCI. Aujourd'hui, euh, c'est la célébration de la fête du travail. Et cette fête-là représente pour nous quelque chose d'assez important. Pourquoi Parce que quand on se rappelle l'historique même de cette fête, c'est une fête qui a été obtenue grâce à la lutte de certains travailleurs américains, pratiquement 200 000 travailleurs qui ont lutté, et cette lutte-là a été une lutte assez acharnée. Mais aujourd'hui, c'est à la sueur de, ce, de, de leur front, c'est à la sueur de leur sang, qu'on a pu obtenir cette lutte, cette victoire. Et aujourd'hui, cela représente quelque chose d'assez grand pour nous, parce que si ces personnes-là n'avaient pas lutté, aujourd'hui, on n'allait pas bénéficier des 8 heures de travail. Donc, nous disons que c'est quelque chose d'assez important. Au niveau de mon pays, C'est toujours des célébrations, c'est des revendications, c'est des doléances que les différents syndicats du pays vont porter au niveau gouvernemental. Et ensuite, le gouvernement va regarder ça de près pour que la situation des travailleurs de la classe ouvrière s'améliore dans le pays. Et nous savons qu'aujourd'hui, pratiquement tous les pays africains sont gouvernés par le capitalisme. Ce qui freine un peu, je veux dire, la prospérité au niveau de la classe ouvrière. Et donc, ce combat-là, c'est un combat pour tous les syndicats, c'est un combat pour euh, tous ceux qui luttent pour la liberté des, des travailleurs, des opprimés, de tous ceux qui sont exploités. 
Et cette lutte, aujourd'hui, nous savons qu'au niveau même de mon pays, la Côte d'Ivoire, c'est beaucoup de, de combats encore parce qu'il y a des entreprises où, malheureusement, on parle de 8 heures de temps de travail. Mais ça, c'est dans la forme, mais dans le fond, malheureusement, il y a des entreprises encore qui travaillent un peu plus que ça, où les gens font 10 heures de travail, 12 heures de travail, voire 14 heures de travail. Et malheureusement, ces heures supplémentaires-là ne sont pas payées. May Day for us and I guess today for workers all over the world is a very important, unique day for us in South Africa, but I guess the working class all over the world since 2008, um, deep global crisis of capitalism, we have been going um, under very severe challenges and to be blunt, I think that workers of the world and the South African working class have been under siege from neoliberal policies that have been adopted since 1996 um, in our country. And I'm sure you understand, when they say IMF is in your country, it's a terrible experience any country shouldn't have. Because you sell your sovereignty to them. Yeah? They make sure the government will not even talk to the people. They only talk to them because they are bringing some small amount of money. So the 80s, the structural adjustment programs, the economic recovery programs, and all that were managed by IMF. Of course, you go with your policies, and then they say, we approve or we disapprove. Then you, they push you to accept what they think is good for your country. They already designed answers even before the questions are asked. So they bring this here, they give you that small amount of money, and then you are asked to do so many things. In the 80s and 90s, they sacked tens of thousands of workers because that's what IMF has, has government to do. And many, many people had their lives you know, truncated because of that. And for us in the Union, that is one thing you we'll never forget, that we lost tens of thousands of our members to IMF programs. Today, as I speak to you, government has banned the employment of young people into the public service. Why? Because they are preparing to go to army. And so these neoliberal policies that the international financial institutions are promoting worldwide is something that, as people who are taking care of workers, we always suffer. Well, very critical of those neoliberal policies were the moment we decided to go to IMF. And then in 1983, uh, uh, economic recovery program was a new liberal policy, which was uh, uh, directed by the IMF and World Bank. You know, we saw that at that particular economic recovery program, uh, workers were laid off. And then in the 1990s, the structural adjustment program, the same thing dictated by the uh, IMF and the World Bank actually led to the shrinking of the uh, employment avenues for this country. There was massive redundancies, massive retrenchment, you know, of labor. And then, unfortunately, in this part of the world, when you lose your job, then you are left to go and die. Whereas in the developed countries in Europe and America, when you don't even have a job, they still pay you. So why would institutions like the Britain institutions come to impose such policies on us? So you can see that these are neoliberal policies that actually led to uh, the sale of state, state-owned enterprises to the, the, the multinationals. Everybody says, do you see what are you doing? TUC, we have made enough noise. We have said that IMF is not good for Ghana. What's apart from anywhere? People think that they should do things normally. But look, once the IMF thing is signed, and then we start seeing the effect, you see where we'll be. You know, you see, water prices went up by 30 something percent when we are already having very high cost of living. Water, water, 
Ghana cannot provide water for its people. And we are now increasing the cost of water that people drink, use to shower and so on. It means that this country is, is, you know, is in serious trouble. The electricity prices have gone up. Fuel price, look at fuel prices. Our city has lost its value. And if you put all these things together, and you assess the impact on individuals, workers, and so on, we find that workers in this country are really suffering. The, 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 the consequences of that is the undermining of workers' rights. You know, workers' rights to employment, uh, quality jobs, uh, and then it creates low uh, incomes and so on. If we do not unite as uh, workers, throughout the country, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the continent, then we will suffer severely under these new liberal arrangements, which are only seeking to, you know, uh, enhance the uh, profit maximization capacity of uh, capitalism. Also, that talks to the importance of the role of the state in the economy. We would have demanded that we don't need a, a state that is um, carrying a knob kiri. We need a state that basically intervenes in the economy, a state that drives a revolutionary agenda. But fundamentally for that state, which, was, which is what has postponed our liberation, that state needed to take ownership and control of all commanding heights of the economy, all our country's minerals, and so that at the back of those minerals, it can champion beneficiation it can build new sectors so that we can smash poverty and uh, so that we can undo uh, unemployment uh, deal with questions of of inequalities by making sure that we we, we create the necessary jobs um, that can pay people uh, a living wage what i would say is that injustice in ghana is injustice everywhere on the continent and so if a worker is suffering in Ghana, that worker must be seen to be suffering everywhere on this continent. Similarly, in any part of the continent, whether in South Africa, whether in, uh, in Nigeria, in Niger, in Senegal, our problems are one and the same. Our challenges are one and the same. And so that is the main reason why solidarity is important and we must make sure we sustain solidarity. So working class solidarity must not die. E por último, nós, enquanto UNTG, apelamos à união entre os trabalhadores. Não só a união, mas a solidariedade entre os trabalhadores é importante, porque, fim ao cabo, nós é que trabalhamos para produzir riqueza. Não só em defesa dos nossos interesses ou direitos enquanto trabalhadores, mas também poder unir para a defesa nacional e para a defesa da África em geral. Nossa working class é a única classe capaz de carregar a revolução to its logical conclusion. Not because it is anointed by God, but because it is robbed broad daylight, its labor surplus value, it, and, and if you raise its levels of consciousness and, and you explain to it and make it understand that it must see itself as a class for itself to liberate itself, the working class can be consistent in pursuit of that class struggle as the only guarantee for change. Workers of Africa, Let's unite. Let us unite. Because there is something in unity that you can't get anywhere. I always tell my colleagues that the human heart is very soft. There are the softest parts of the body. But if you manage to put enough hearts together, like a mountain, even the bulldozers cannot crash it. Our agenda must be to ensure that Africa's future is in Africa.